Welcome to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light. What's your story? What does accessibility mean to you? What's your mission? Welcome all to Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I'm your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the community relations manager at Accessory and a passionate disability rights advocate and trial attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Um, today I'm wearing a black v-neck with a white collar. I'm a white male, 38 years old, and I've got two pictures in my background with my kids. Um, and I'm also in uh, a power wheelchair. And um, uh, with today's spotlight session brought to you by Accessory, we're joined by Michelle Glaze, the Professional Outreach Director at Foundation Fighting Blindness. Welcome, Michelle. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have you on the program and I uh, would love to just dive right into it. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the Foundation Fighting Blindness? Sure, I'll start by saying I am a 48 year old female. I've got shoulder length, uh, brown hair, brown eyes. I am wearing a black and white striped V-neck dress today, and I am coming to you from my office. So I've got a uh, a picture and a wall behind me, um, and I'm seated in a cream colored, uh, pretty comfortable chair. Um, and I'm so thrilled to be here today. Thank you for inviting me on the show. My story with the foundation started in 2011, actually. Um, I had been diagnosed with an inherited retinal disease called retinitis pigmentosa. And like many people diagnosed with these conditions, I spent many years denying um, the fact that I had a disease that would lead to vision loss. Um, after about seven years of, of being in denial, I finally decided to do a little research and I stumbled upon an organization called Foundation Fighting Blindness. The mission of the foundation is to drive research to find treatments and cures for blinding retinal diseases. And at that time, I decided that I wanted to get involved to help raise money to drive some of that research. So I participated in 2011 in a flagship fundraiser at the Foundation Fighting Blindness called Vision Walk. I live in Alabama, and this was occurring in um, a town called Birmingham. So Vision Walk was the first time that I ever really stood up and said, I'm an individual with an inherited retinal condition. Um, I have vision loss. And I did form a team, and we did the walk. And I remember being there with others with similar levels of um, vision loss and blindness and thinking, my goodness, what a wonderful connection. I felt very empowered, a little anxious, but it was so exciting to get involved and to you know, connect with the community of others with low vision or blindness and um, you know, join forces to, to do something good for our community by trying to help find some treatments and cures. Fast forward, oh gosh, about eight years. And um, I was at a crossroads in my career. At that time, I was in the medical industry and in the sales arena. And I actually called the Foundation Fighting Blindness because I wanted to do a local fundraiser in my hometown. And when I contacted the organization, I got connected with Kat Dudley, who at that time was our human resources manager or the human resources manager for the Foundation Fighting Blindness. And I began to question her a little bit. I, I asked her if there were any potential opportunities to go to work for the foundation. And she shared that the foundation at that time was going through some, um, some changes. We had a, the foundation had a new CEO and a new COO, and she encouraged me to send on my, um, my resume. So I did. <laughs> And she shared that I probably wouldn't hear back anything for a while, but uh, lo and behold, about 30 minutes later that day, Pat reached back out to me and said, our COO, Jason Minzo, would like to talk to you. Uh, that was in March of 2018. Jason and I had our first call in April. And then for the next almost year, I proceeded to reach out to Jason every chance I got. Um, 
he had shared at that time that he had a vision for what is now professional outreach. And with my background in sales, marketing, business development, and my own personal experience with vision loss due to an inherited retinal disease, I just really felt passionate about the fact that I, I really wanted to step into the role with the foundation. So um, I, I continued on and Jason and I had several calls and meetings about professional outreach. And then finally in February of 2019, I was hired on, I joined uh, Ben Shaverman, who is now our VP of Science Communication. And Ben and I began to build and grow uh, what is now the professional outreach department. So five years later, here I am. And um, the foundation has been just such a tremendous experience for me, both personally and professionally. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's, that's I love, I love hearing stories like that, how people get involved and how it happens. It's, it's, so often it's either meant to be, or it's just like everything comes together in perfect ways. And, um, and I just, I was so amazed that over the last 15, 50 years, the, the foundation has raised over $915 million, which just so shows how big of a force you are and, and the changes you're making. And it's, um, dollars do, do make a big difference in research. Um, it's, it's, it's that, it, that inexpensive to actually put forward research so i just think that's that's incredible and you know with all that you're doing could you, could you tell us what you love most about your work and kind of you know, the, whatever else you've got going on in 2024 oh gosh um there's so many things i love about the work that we do both as an organization and and what i do professionally um on a personal note i think you know the the biggest thing with the foundation fighting blindness is because the organization is driving research um, to find treatments and cures for these diseases, the foundation is really a tremendous sense of hope and optimism for individuals with either an, an inherited retinal disease or age-related macular degeneration. Um, and that's exciting to be able to share, right? So many individuals when diagnosed with these conditions, they really, they don't know where, where to turn. They don't know what to expect. Um, there can be a sense of hopelessness, and the foundation really provides a breadth of knowledge, um, information about research and resources, community through our chapters, and being able to connect with others in the community, and hope through all of the research that's underway. Um, there are more than 45 clinical trials underway right now for a retinal degenerative disease and a number of different therapeutic modalities. Um, some of these clinical trials are gene-specific, and they're looking at one specific genetic mutation, but there are more and more that are gene agnostic, so they're really applicable to a broader array of individuals with either an inherited retinal disease or dry age-related macular degeneration, and the foundation is a, a driving force in getting those treatments across the finish line. So the hope piece, I think, is is the the piece that is exciting to share and also um, just really being able to get people connected with the resources they need to function and thrive independently now, right? While waiting for treatment or cure down the road. Hope is such a powerful drug. Like for, for me, after I became paralyzed, like having hope it made me fight harder, made me work harder, made me look for research and made me, it made me do more. And that's, that's a beautiful thing to be able to always keep moving forward and never giving up. And um, I just, I love that, that hope is, is embedded within the organization and everything that you do. And um, I would love for you to also share, could, what's one misconception about the blind and low vision community that you would like to debunk? Hmm. Oh gosh. Um, you know, I think when it comes to any disability, um, individuals that aren't familiar with, the power and strength and, um, you know, the gifts that we have as individuals with varying disabilities, you know, people as a whole don't, don't understand what we can bring to the table. Um, sometimes people with disabilities are viewed as being um, unable to achieve some of the same things that, that folks without disabilities can. And so I think that connecting with professionals like yourself um, and other professionals who have really 
you know, stepped up and thrived in their professional careers despite their personal challenges and who have been able to showcase and really highlight the strengths that our challenges bring about. That's something that I'm really passionate about. And I think that, you know, the more that we raise awareness as a community of individuals with disabilities, the better. Um, because people see the, um, you know, they see what we are capable of despite the challenges that we overcome. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of strength there and uh, perseverance there. And, you know, we have a unique skill set that people that don't have our challenges, um, they can't appreciate until we, we share and showcase those things with them. It's important to have a chance to dance and to get yourself out there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, a, I'm a big believer that, that really nobody's going to stop me but me. So if, if I want to do something, I'm going to find a way. It's going to be creative that there's many paths forward and it might look different than other people's. It might, it might be different, um, but different can still be meaningful and impactful and, and can get you where you need to go. Um, so, and then another one of my favorite questions to ask our guests is, what, is a, what does accessibility mean to you? To me, accessibility means being able to um, fully thrive and function independently with adaptations needed so that I can see the world the same way that other, others can through an auditory path. Thank you for that. What advice would you give a business wanting to do more around accessibility? That's a great question. Um, I think that the first step is to ask questions to understand what accessibility is, what accessibility means to the employees who need it, right? We're all a little bit different. So taking the time to really have a conversation with individuals who need ad adaptations so that those adaptations can be fully met um, and having patience to learn and, and explore different ways to make accessibility um, really um, available to employees who need it. And, and with your employees, you can then use that to apply that to your customers or even with your customers. There's just, we don't know what we don't know. So learning more about communities, like e even with Foundation Fighting Blindness, there's, I'm always learning every single day, something new, but it's got to put yourself into different communities or or welcome communities in to learn from them. Right, it's thinking outside of the box, right? That's um, a big piece of all of this for all of us as we're as we're learning and growing and exploring. And there's there's so much technology available and it's changing so quickly that we have to stay on top of that, right? And um, and explore and learn what all is out there in order to continue to make things more and more accessible for all of us. And what, what is some technology that that you've been introduced to or know others using that kind of has been game changing for the community? Um, I think that for me right now, I have just dipped into um, screen reader technology. So Fusion uh, that utilizes JAWS and Zoom text. Um, I still have some usable vision. But rather than struggling through the day trying to see my computer screen, um, I am grateful that the Foundation Fighting Blindness has uh, allowed me to get some training so that I can utilize JAWS. And it has been such a remarkable change for me. It's just made the day um, less stressful. And, and at the end of the day, I'm not as tired because I can listen instead of trying to see um, there are also a couple of um, apps that I use on my iPhone that are really helpful, and I'm using them more and more. One is Seeing AI, um, and I use that a lot to read documents. I can take a picture of a document, mail, um, you know, labels, anything like that, and it will read to me what I'm what I'm looking at. Be My Eyes is another app that really has become, um, it's, it's remarkable. Uh, you can take a photo now, they have an AI component and the level of detail that that app can provide is absolutely mind blowing. Uh, it is, it's remarkable. And then there's also a, 
a video component where you can get assistance with navigation and, and other and other things um, from a person who has volunteered to assist. Um, and AI. I an AI component there. I, I just I love AI so much. It's just it's the worst it's going to be today. It's just going to get better and better with time with the right uh, bringing in the community to help build it out, investing the right dollars. It's just it's very very exciting days ahead. And I'd love to ask you also as as the internet usage keeps going up and up and up. What are some things that you wish you would see happen online? Oh, um, well, I think that part of the, the challenge for me um, as a person who utilizes screen reader technology is that not all websites are accessible. And I feel like more and more as we go to an, an online world, um, I'm having to raise awareness and educate especially with like online forms and, um, you know, just applications, all sorts of different things. Every site seems to function just a little bit differently. Some are really, really accessible and easy to use. There are others that are completely inaccessible. And um, so I know for me personally, I, it, it is a challenge sometimes to, to navigate because if I, for example, if I'm going to a doctor's appointment now, one of the first things that they do is they say, well, can you go online and fill out this form? And, you know, this is how you have to complete your information for your appointment. And in many cases, those sites aren't accessible for um, me as a screen reader user. So it'd be really great if more companies um, and organizations would focus on the accessibility piece. <laughs> And um, that way, you know, as we're trying to navigate those pieces more frequently, we'll have greater access to them. It's 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 such an important piece of the puzzle because if you can't, you know, sign up for the appointment or provide the information you need for the appointment, that doesn't help you that the physical part of you know the the the, the storefront or the doctor's office is accessible. You need you need the whole experience mm -hmm. to be accessible to be able to benefit the, the most and. And healthcare is is very important to to be able to, to do all those things um, and not leave one of them out. But Michelle, thank you so much for being our guest today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. Um, you've been a, a wonderful guest. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. And if, for our viewers, if they can come check out your website, what what URL should they go to? It's www.fightingblindness.org. Thank you so much for that. And for all of our guests, thank you so much for saying to the end of Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us at Accessibility underscore community. And as always, thank you for being on this journey. Bye everyone. Bye Michelle. Bye bye.